Greetings my dear friend, my name is Maxim and welcome to my channel and today we are going to be discussing in great details multiple myeloma, Waldström, macroglobulinemia as well as M gas and I will briefly mention localized plasma cytoma, heavy and light chain diseases for completeness sake. Well, without further ado, let's enjoy the video and dive into it. Plasma cell dyscrasia is a dysfunction of plasma cells which normally secrete immunoglobulins in response to antigen presentation. In multiple myeloma, for example, the plasma cells secrete one antibody against some phantom antigen. This dedicates the entire immune system to fighting something that doesn't exist. There are multiple consequences. The first, monoclonal antibody produces overwhelming concentration of useless antibody. It can be detected by hemoglobin electrophoresis or serum electrophoresis as PEP, as an M spike. The consequences is when real infection comes, there is no antibody to fight infection. These patients develop recurrent infections. Sometimes complete immunoglobulins aren't made, but rather only pieces. They get deposited in the kidneys and can be detected on urine electrophoresis. The fact that there are these proteins in the blood means there will be increased protein gap. Plasma cells also secrete osteoclast activating factor which causes the bone resorption, it results in hypercalcemia and pathological non-traumatic fractures. Electrophoresis is a laboratory technique used to separate protein molecules based on their size and electrical charge. Proteins are negatively charged. Albumin is the major protein component of serum and represents the largest peak that lies closest to the positive electrode. Globulins make up a smaller fraction of the total serum proteins but represent the primary focus of interpretation of serum protein electrophoresis. Importantly, increased alpha-1 globulins can indicate acute or chronic inflammation or cancer, decreased alpha-1 can be seen in alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, alpha-2 zone shows ceruloplasmin, alpha-2 macroglobulins and haptoglobin. Increased alpha-2 can be seen in acute or chronic inflammation and decreased alpha-2 in hemolysis. Beta zone shows beta lipoprotein, transferrin and complement 3, C3. Increased beta can indicate hyperlipoproteinemia, hypercholesterolemia. Decreased beta may indicate decreased LDL cholesterol and malnutrition. Gamma indicates immunoglobulins. Increase in gamma can be seen in multiple myeloma, Waldenstern macroglobulinemia, lymphomas, chronic inflammatory diseases, acute infection and chronic liver diseases. During infection electrophoresis shows polyclonal response, whereas in multiple myeloma response is monoclonal. There are six types of plasma cell dyscrasias. Monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance, localized plasma cytoma, multiple myeloma, Waldström macroglobulinemia, heavy chain disease and light chain disease. Monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance is when there is M-bound monoclonal response but without Ben Jones, lytic lesions, renal failure and hypercalcemia. Plasma cytosis is less than 10%. We have to rule out multiple myeloma firstly. There is a risk, approximately 2% per year, for this condition to be transformed into multiple myeloma. This probably represents an early version of multiple myeloma. Patients usually more than 75 years old with positive SPEP but negative urinary PEP and biopsy shows less than 10% plasma cells. 
Localized plasmacytoma can be extraosseous, intraosseous, and cutaneous. Extraosseous lesions can be found in respiratory system, nasal cavity, paranasal sinuses, lungs. It is not as dangerous as intraosseous and can be resected. Intraosseous lesions more dangerous without Benz Jones proteins. And cutaneous plasmacytoma is a very rare condition. It is believed that multiple myeloma happens due to translocation between chromosome number 14 and 11, namely cyclin D, which is responsible for proliferation and immunoglobulins heavy change gene. This translocation equals over proliferation, or it could be because of deletion in chromosome number 13 of tumor suppressor gene. In majority of cases, multiple myeloma produce immunoglobulin G in a lesser extent immunoglobulin A and light chains, but of course there are variations. Plasma cell can secrete interleukin-6, which is a marker of active disease. It's responsible for autocrine stimulation and autoproliferation of plasma cell. Furthermore, plasma cell secretes interleukin-1, TNF and rank ligand, which activate osteoclasts. This lead to lytic lesions, pathological fractures, increased alkaline phosphatase, and hypercalcemia. We can remember hypercalcemia symptoms with the following mnemonic bones, stones, abdominal groans, and psychic moans. The last one happens due to over accumulation of calcium around sodium channels, which prevents action potential to occur. This leads to hypofunction of central nervous system, lethargy and depression. Bone marrow failure, anemia, lachepinia, thrombocytopenia or normal platelet count, but still bleeding tendency because platelets are coated with abnormal immunoglobulins. Additionally, coagulation proteins do not work properly. Bones, pain, especially in the lower back, pathological fractures, pain increase with movement, nerve root compression can be seen, flat bones, skull, sternum, ribs and pelvis are usually affected due to bone marrow localization. Grossly, those lesions look like red jello. X-ray a radiolucent area on flat bones. Multiple myeloma can enter a leukemic phase. Microscopically, we can see mod cells with inclusion bodies or Russell bodies in rough endoplasmic reticulum, precipitated immunoglobulins or snapper schneid granules, and Dutcher body, intranuclear immunoglobulins. Light chains can disturb the nephron by activating lysosomes inside proximal convoluted cells and eventual Fanconi syndrome formation, which is inadequate reabsorption in the proximal renal tubules. It results in various small molecules of metabolism being passed into the urine, like glucose, amino acid, uric acid, phosphate and bicarbonate. Signs and symptoms include polyuria, polydipsia and dehydration, as well as hypophosphatemia, acidosis, hypokalemia, hyperchloremia, glucosuria, proteinuria. We can see proteination cast formation at the collective ducts. Those proteinaceous casts consist of Benz Jones proteins, immunoglobulins, Tom Horsfall proteins, and albumin. Those patients are at increased risk of pyelonephritis. If we see a patient with signs and symptoms of multiple myeloma, we have to do serum as well as urinary electrophoresis. If those are positive, we have to confirm multiple myeloma with bone marrow biopsy, which indicative 
of more than 10% of plasma cells. We can remember signs and symptoms of multiple myeloma with the following mnemonic CREP, which stands for hypercalcemia, renal failure, anemia and bone pain. Treatment is usually consist of chemotherapy with melphalan and prednisone and either thalidomide or bortezomib. If the patient is more than 70 years old and there is no donor, we use chemotherapy. If the patient is less than 70 years old and there is a donor, we can go with transplant. Walderström macroglobulinemia is a myeloma spectrum disease. The marrow produces immunoglobulin type M, thus it presents with peripheral neuropathy and hyperviscosity syndrome. We will see M spike on serum electrophoresis, but no lytic lesions on skeletal survey. Bone marrow biopsy shows a lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma in more than 10% of the marrow. Treatment consists of plasmapheresis for hyperviscosity syndrome, and hemotherapy includes a rituximab containing regimen. In Wilderstrom disease, we will see protein gap is positive, serum electrophoresis is positive, but urinary electrophoresis and skeletal survey are negative. Bone marrow biopsy will show more than 10% lymphocytes in Wilderstrom, if we will see less than 10% of plasma cells, it is called MGAS, and if plasma cells are more than 10%, it is multiple myeloma. Hyperviscosity syndrome, blurred vision, fatigue, mucosal bleeding, headache, altered mental status, the combination of peripheral neuropathy and hyperviscosity means we are dealing with Wilderstrom. Heavy chain diseases could be due to immunoglobulins A, which affects lungs and GIT primarily, or immunoglobulins G, which targets liver, spleen and lymph nodes, or it could be due to immunoglobulins mu in which we can see pathological fractures, amyloidosis, spleen, liver and abdominal lymph nodes involvement. Light chain disease can be converted into amyloidosis, which is rigid, linear, non-branching fibrils of beta platin. It usually affects heart, GIT, kidneys, we can see macroglossia. For diagnosis, we use abdominal fat aspiration. Stains used for amyloidosis can be remembered with the following mnemonic. She looks too pretty, try to catch her, which stands for stains, Lugol's iodine, toluidine blue, pus, Theoflavin T, Congo Red, H and E stain, plus methyl blue. Well, this is all what I have for you today, guys. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and comment down at the comment section. Suggest some future topics for the lectures and um, yeah i wish you a very lovely day and see you guys later goodbye